Good evening and welcome to our sixth form information evening. My name is Ben Green and I'm head teacher at Norton Natural School and I will be hosting this evening alongside Mr Messenger, who is our head of sixth form. We are sorry not to be able to greet you in person this evening, but very much hope that we give you a flavour of life and study in our sixth form. And we are grateful to you for engaging with us via the wonders of technology. You are at least spared going out on a dark, damp evening and the challenge of trying to park at school at an open evening. Whilst in some respects a virtual open evening feels very similar to how we were running things this time last year, there are many things which are different for this year's students in year 11 as they approach the spring and summer compared to the last two years. We are increasingly optimistic that examinations will indeed take place this summer with some amendments and guidance to reflect the impact of the pandemic. And whilst we cannot greet and meet you in person this evening, we expect and hope to be able to run subsequent elements of our year 11 into 12 transition programme face to face as we head towards the spring and the summer. There will be many questions in the days, weeks and months ahead. There always are, even pre-COVID, if anyone can remember that. Rest assured, we will be doing all that we can in the weeks ahead to ensure students are making the best possible progress over the remainder of their courses and preparing and responding in line with the further guidance promised in early February to ensure that students are ready to work towards securing the grades they deserve and to progress onto their chosen routes next year. A similar message applies to those of you who are not yet students at Norton Natural School, but looking to join us in the sixth form. We hope that through your engagement with us and what you see and hear tonight, that you do submit an application. Once an application is submitted, we will keep you informed through regular updates of how we will be looking to support you through induction over the summer and into September. But over now to the main part of our evening. In a moment, we will run the formal presentation about our sixth form, the online equivalent of the talk we would usually do in the main hall. Under normal circumstances, if we were in school, you would then tour the school and visit students and colleagues in the subjects that you are interested in. Instead, subject information is hosted on our website, which I hope you will explore. At the end of the presentation, Mr. Messenger and I will be available to answer questions live and online, and questions should be entered via the message facility, which is indicated on your screens uh, by a speech bubble uh, with a question mark in. I do hope that the technology does not let us down and that you have an informative and constructive evening. Hello. My name is Thomas Dadden and I'm the head boy here at the Norton Natural School and it's a pleasure to welcome you to this open event on behalf of the student body. Now Natural is very proud to be able to trace its heritage back to the early 17th century and throughout this long history it's developed a particular reputation for academic success but also a reputation for outstanding teaching across all departments. I'm fortunate to have spent nearly seven years here at Natural, roughly one and a half in sixth form and throughout that time it's really solidified my ability to develop as an individual and to help realise my academic potential, which I think has been facilitated massively so by the staff here at NKS. That potential has helped been realised by the teachers in the way that they're able to facilitate and develop my learning both inside and outside of the class, particularly with the dedication they have to the subject and the dedication that they put into their teaching of the subject, which I think is equally important at sixth form. Furthermore, not only the staff here are phenomenal, but the leadership of the school and the sick form is phenomenal. So although the COVID pandemic was unfortunate in that it had to happen and we had to learn from home, the leadership and the expertise that thick, the sick form team took on in terms of keeping us informed with decisions that would impact our learning was absolutely outstanding. But more so than that, messages from the head teacher as well kept not only us informed, but the parents informed as well so that we could be sure that our education wasn't going to be negatively affected by the COVID pandemic and that any government decisions would be relayed to us and how it would impact on our learning and how best the school were going to move to ensure that any decisions made weren't going to negatively affect us in the long run, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. Now here at Natural, I read history, politics and government and geography but I'm really happy to have been able to take an AS called the EPQ, which stands for Extended Project Qualification, on top of my studies. So the EPQ project that I've taken focuses on 18th century British foreign policy, but the option and the scope that you have with an EPQ is absolutely fantastic. So this year we've had students focusing on science, 
focusing on fictional stories, the development of medicine. It's been really, really interesting to see the projects that other people have done. And I think it's, it's this scope that's offered within an EPQ, uh, particularly for essay-based subjects, which is really worth taking up. And it's just one of the many fantastic opportunities that I've been offered here at NKS. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for attending there, and I'd like to pass you on to our excellent head teacher, Mr Green. Hello and welcome, and thank you for joining us for our sixth form information presentation. We are so glad to be able to share this with you, albeit remotely. Why? Because this is our opportunity to share with you the achievements of our sixth form students, of which we are so proud. And not just their achievements, but their qualities and characteristics. This pride is felt and shared by every member of the school community. And I trust that this comes across with the students and the colleagues when you are eventually able to meet them in person. On the screen is the school's mission statement, written by our student leaders in the autumn of 2019. Inspired by the school's motto, things done well create the best memories, the words of the original Sir Norton Natchball in the 17th century. In 2019, students were tasked to think about what this meant to them in the 21st century, nearly 500 years on from the school's foundation. And I think this mission statement articulates their hopes and aspirations very clearly, and I like to think it remains consistent with Sir Norton Natchball's enduring motto. The mission statement underpins our thinking about the curriculum, which we articulate as the Natchball Baccalaureate. This articulates our curriculum offer as being based on our students' experience in school being built on four key pillars, combining to provide an holistic education. The first is academic, the timetable, the subjects, the lessons, the assessments, the exam outcomes. A rigorous academic curriculum taught in creative and demanding ways, developing students' metacognition, recognising and acknowledging that secure understanding of knowledge underpins higher order thinking, synthesis within and across subjects and analysis. Now there's no doubt that when you speak to colleagues and students across subjects they will tell you that A-levels are harder than they were five or six years ago. There is more content to cover and more concepts and skills to master and the concepts and skills are more challenging than previously. Now if you are in year 11 this is perhaps the last thing that you want to hear at this stage because already I know you are thinking it's hard enough in Year 11. But the good news is that current Year 11 students should to a large degree be better prepared for this in that they will have studied GCSEs which largely follow this pattern. Linear, less coursework and frankly harder. The second pillar is extracurriculum. Extracurricular. Enrichment, sport, music, the arts. For a wide range of enrichment and extracurricular activities which broaden students' perspectives, knowledge, skills and talents, reinforcing that high quality outcomes in any field come as a result of commitment, targeted practice and teamwork, consequentially developing resilience, adaptability and learning through mistakes. And in the sixth form, the opportunities abound through sports, the arts and drama, competitions and the sixth form panto. The third pillar is community. Leadership, making a contribution, making a difference, developing a sense from experience of how we gain from and how we can contribute to the communities in which we live, study and work. We can all make a contribution, whether that's through leadership, fundraising, volunteering. In the sixth form there are student leadership and prefect opportunities, uh, mentoring programmes, charitable endeavours as well as volunteering at local primary schools and organisations. The fourth and final pillar is excel and extend, stretch and challenge, looking to stretch ourselves in at least one area of the three curriculum strands above. This may be by application and progression to a highly selective course, Oxbridge, Medicine, Veterinary Science, Russell Group, but it may also be through progression to a blue chip apprenticeship, through higher representation in sport, semi-professional performance on the stage or local or regional youth leadership. We are proud of our students' academic results. You would expect us, as a selective school, to have some impressive raw results to showcase. However, alongside these examples, in their A-levels completed in 2019, our students secured overall positive value added, meaning that they achieved better grades per A-level SAT than students of similar ability did in other schools nationally. 
Our last two years' outcomes were even stronger in terms of results achieved, albeit of course these were sent to assess grades produced as a result of the pandemic. But over 75% of our students went on to university. Over 35% of them secured a place in one of the top 30 universities across the country. And 10% of our students went straight into employment or high-level apprenticeship. Grades are important, of course, but living, studying and working in the 21st century demands far more than just strong academic achievement, key as though that will be to unlocking the door to the next stage, be that university, an apprenticeship or work. The events of the last two years have shown us the importance of other qualities which have tested humanity globally. We are tremendously proud of our students' human qualities, how their characters develop in response to the challenges they face academically and often beyond school as well, their humanity and integrity, their sense of community and moral purpose, which lead to a holistic development of knowledge, skills and qualities to complement and underpin their academic achievement. If you take one thing away from this presentation and our engagement with you in the coming days and weeks, I hope it is our conviction that it is not a case of one size fits all. We want to know about your interests passions and aspirations, and sixth form really enables us to do that. Our commitment to you is that in making an application to us, we will work with you to ensure that you are on a programme which reflects your achievements at GCSE, but is consistent with those aspirations. Once you are following that programme, we will make a further commitment to you to support, challenge and push you to achieve the best possible grades. And there is one other commitment we will make, which is to care for you. Our staff will get to know you. We are smaller than some other local sixth forms. And this means that you will get to know colleagues well, both teachers and support staff. If you've been at Norton Natchball for the last five years, you will experience a richer, more in-depth relationship with teachers as you explore subjects more deeply. If you are joining us anew, and perhaps a little anxious about the transition, it means that you will get to know us, and we will get to know you more quickly and better than you might imagine. This matters in teaching and it is also reflected in our pastoral care. I believe that what truly defines us as individuals is how we respond when the going gets tough. It's true of us of individuals, and I also think it's true of us as a school. It's when our true character shines through, when it's difficult, whether this is in academic study or through some of the broader challenges you might face in life. That is where we make our difference when things are challenging, as inevitably they will be at some point. It's tremendously important what our young people achieve over the next few years in terms of results as these will open pathways to further study and employment. But just as important is how they go about it. They will get impressive exam results at Norton Natural, but they will also leave and walk towards their future with a critical awakening and a shared humanity, confident in their abilities and potential knowing that they can aim high in their chosen fields, but with the humility and integrity to know that they don't have to trample on people to achieve those goals. Year 12 may still seem a long way off, but our partnership with you begins today. I do hope that you are impressed with what you see and hear in this presentation. It is now my pleasure to hand over to our Head of Sixth Form, Mr Messenger. Thank you, Mr Green. So why should you come here to Norton Natural to study for your A-levels? Well, by the time you leave us, you'll be a confident, young, mature individual, ready to face challenges of the outside world. You'll be equipped with a bunch of skills, both personal and academic, as long with three good A-level choices. We are confident that we are able to support you in achieving your end goals, whether it's to get to your first choice university, degree apprenticeship, apprenticeship or future career path. But most importantly, we'll be there to develop the confidence and resilience you're going to need to face the challenges of later life. All our students will start studying three A-levels. Some will want to choose four, however, we only recommend this if you are getting seven, eights and nines across the board. We offer a wide range of subjects from physics to media studies, from art to sociology, and our curriculum is tailored to the individual needs of the students each year. If, however, you are thinking you're not really sure what sort of subjects to take, then I strongly suggest you look at the facilitating subjects. These are the subjects that universities really like and want to see on applications. These include English literature, Mathematics, further Mathematics, French, Spanish, History, Geography, Biology, Chemistry and Physics. All of our teachers are fully committed and experts in the fields 
and know how to support getting the best grades out of our students. Accompanying this knowledge, we have excellent facilities here in Northern Natural School. This includes three dedicated study areas, which allows you to study during your non-contact time to ensure that you are working both in the classroom and out of it. That's how you're going to get your good grades. We have an on-site gym. We have a dedicated library that has over 100,000 books to browse at your leisure. We also have our new digital learning centre, which contains our physics and computing departments. Choosing the right subjects is one of the first things you need to think about, because if you don't love your subjects, you're going to find the A-levels very difficult. Therefore, to help you with this, we have put together subject leader and student presentations. These can be found on our website in the sixth room area, as well as on our YouTube channel. What these are, they contain information about the course content, how students will be assessed, the sorts of work students will be doing, as well as giving that real student insight as to what the subject is like to study, the pitfalls and the successes they've had so far along the road. So I strongly recommend you have a look at these. However, if you do have any other questions that are related to these subjects or anything relating to sixth form, please do not hesitate to contact us at sixthformrecruitment at nks.kent.sch.uk. Alongside our curriculum offer, we do offer a number of different activities and qualifications for students to take in. First, I'd like to mention the EQ or the Extended Project Qualification. This is a research project that could be completely on any aspect that students are passionate about in their lives. They do their own research, they write an article academically, and they then submit it to the exam board. And it's equivalent to half an A-level. This not only gives them an extra qualification, but it also teaches them the skills they're going to need when they go to university or have to write up anything academic in the future. Alongside this, all of our students are off timetable on a Wednesday afternoon period five. This allows us to develop a strong community for a range of different enrichment activities, whether it's being a sport or they're free to doing some sort of gaming activity. We also have a personal development programme here in All Natural School, which sees students either have drop days through focus days or compete during form times on a number of different activities, such as interviews, CV writing, building resilience, developing those skills they're going to need for later life. We also offer one week's work-related learning at the end of year 12, which sees our students go into the local community to put the skills which they've learned in these personal development sessions and in the classroom into practice in the real world as well as the opportunity to speak to people who are doing the sorts of jobs they want to do in the future to identify the skills which they need to continue to develop over the coming year. Alongside this, we have a number of different activities that take students outside of the school, such as the Gold Award Duke Venom Programme, the Three Peaks Challenge. We also offer trips to Rome, New York, CERN, London, as well as some of the top universities in the country. Again, putting the skills and seeing the skills they've learnt in the classroom into practice in the real world. Here at NKS, we have a dedicated sixth form team whose role it is to ensure that each student has a tailored pathway to ensure they can succeed. We do this for a number of different initiatives, one of which is our open door policy that makes students feel confident and comfortable come and speak to us. We have an experienced team here at Northern Natural School who knows how to get the best out of each individual student. It's important to remember, however, the next two years are gonna fly by so we need to start thinking about the next steps from day one. And that's where our full-time careers advisor comes in. We work hard to develop the students into confident individuals. We do this for a range of initiatives, which I already mentioned. However, one of the ways that we know that this is successful is we have a number of our students who set up their own societies. These are clubs and organisations that are set up by students for students in lower year groups. And they can cover anything from medicine all the way through to the comic book society and sees students go and attend meet regular meetings and discuss current research and topics on their particular area of their interest. Again, developing those leadership skills was going to help them in later life. Our most recent offset was in 2017, and it highlighted that our ability to identify those students most at risk of underperforming early means that we can put strategies in place to help support the individual as we endeavour to improve their own results. At Northern Natural School, we don't only measure our success by the grades the students achieve on results day, but we also look to develop grounded and rounded individuals ready to face challenges of later life. How do we do this? We follow the VESPA model here in Northern Natural School. We get students to consider their vision on day one. Where do they see themselves in five and ten years' time? Because we want to ensure that students know exactly what the end goal is so they can work backwards and break it down into smaller, more achievable chunks and make progress along that pathway. We get them to consider the effort they are putting in to ensure that students actually know that there is a clear relationship between the hours of studying and the end results. We get them to develop their systems and their organisations to ensure that they know exactly what they need to do to achieve their end goal. We also get them to practice on a regular basis. 
This happens, yes, in terms of the classroom, but also we get them to look at exam papers out of the classroom, as well as mark schemes, because it's important they understand exactly what the examiners are looking for. As I mentioned, we don't just measure our success here at Nashville by the results on results day, but we look at five and ten years' time. And this, on the board behind me, you'll see a number of different organisations that our students have gone into and are now leading in. The important thing to remember about this is that, yes, the results are important, but here at Nashville, they gain more than just good results. They develop the skills they're going to need through later life, be that through initiatives such as developing student leadership, emotional intelligence, humility, resilience, as well as many, many more. These are characteristics that employers really are looking for, and we instill those for a range of different activities here in the World National School. It's now my pleasure to introduce Tierney Fuller, our head girl, to talk about her experiences here at Northern National School. Hello, my name is Tierney and I'm the current head girl here at the Northern National. I'm currently in Year 13 and study Business Studies, Psychology and English Literature and Language, whilst also being given the opportunity to study both a Certificate and Diploma in Financial Studies, which I'm forever grateful for. I have loved every second of my time here. It's safe to say I made the right decision to come and study my A-levels here. Despite the very different circumstances that I joined within, the school life here was, and still is, an amazing experience and I have made many fond memories, which I can partly give to the school's adapt adaptability with handling these difficult times and still providing me with an exceptional education and opportunities. Through my time here, one thing that means so much to me is my teacher's passion for their subjects. This has allowed me to develop a love for business and finance in particular and made me realise this is a pathway I want to take in my life and I have now been offered a place at the London Institute of Banking and Finance where I wish to further my education upon meeting their requirements. Without my school's help and guidance, one would help me find a passion that I can see a career in and two being the opportunities and skills they have given me to make me stand out to the universities I apply to, I don't know where I'd be today. The community here at our school has allowed me to be pushed to reach success whilst also being immensely friendly and supportive, which is something I believe makes our school stand so strongly. Since joining I have met some amazing people and have developed to a much better individual since the person I joined here as. To begin with, I was quite apprehensive to join an all-boys school and be one of a few girls here in the sixth form. However, my mind was put at ease since the first day I joined. Everyone was easygoing and friendly and it made me feel comfortable in the school community almost instantly. So as a girl, if that's something that worries you about joining an all-boys school, trust me, it's not worth the worry at all. You'll meet some amazing people and enjoy your time in the sixth form. I'd like to go on for quite a while about my experience here, but I would like to thank you for listening to me and wish you all the luck of choosing a sixth form, and would love for you to take the opportunity to study here too. I will now hand you back over to our head of sixth form, Mr Messenger. Thank you, and stay safe. Thank you for that, Tierney. I'd now like to talk you through the process of how to apply for your A-levels here at North National School. Our entry criteria is six sixes, or an average of six sixes, including a five in English and Maths, as along with our subject entry criteria, which can be found in the school prospectus on our website and on our social media pages. Again, if you have trouble finding this, please do not hesitate to contact us at sixformrecruitment at nks.kent.sch.uk. The process is different depending on whether you are an internal or an external student. If you are an internal student, you will receive an email from me on your school email, taking you through to the Sims Options Online website. Here, you'll be able to select three A-level choices as well as a reserve. Again, remember that we allow you to choose four if you are getting seven, eight, and nines across the board. In your current GCSEs. If you are an external student you need to apply through the Kent Choices website. Again both deadlines are going to be the 29th of January this year. Following the applications we'll be holding discussions with members of the leadership team and yourselves to ensure that these option choices are going to help you get to where you want to go because nothing worse than starting A-levels and finding out actually you're on the wrong sort of course where you want to be. Therefore these discussions will take place once the applications are in. These are very likely to be online, uh, so you'll get more information directly to your email address, whichever one you apply to us with. I'd like to thank you for listening this evening, and again, if you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at the email address that's on the screen. Thank you. Welcome back. I hope that was uh, useful uh, to listen and uh, hear about uh, the sixth form provision um, and now is the uh, opportunity uh, for you to ask and for us to answer questions as I said earlier that's using the uh, speech bubble icon with the question mark that you should be able to see at the top of your screen um, there will be the first couple of questions um, that we've got that we can pick up 
Uh, there's a question um, about whether we offer extended learning um, or equivalent to half A level in dance or singing. Um, now, whilst we don't formally um, deliver uh, courses in dance or singing, um, it could be something that we, uh, the students explored through uh, our extended project qualification, which is the equivalent of half an A level. Uh, there's more information about that in our prospectus. Um, and also alongside that, we would and we do support uh, students who might be doing uh, courses that they're getting tuition with elsewhere, uh, but that we can somehow support in school. Uh, and so, for example, I can imagine uh, with, with singing that that would be something that we could uh, explore support through with our peripatetic uh, music provision. Um, our next question um, is in relation to uh, school sport. Um, and the question asks about the six form teams competing against other schools. Um, so every year we will have, uh, uh, we will compete locally against other schools in leagues and competitions and cup competitions in football, uh, sometimes with, uh, with, with an A team and a B team. Um, we have also in the past, depending on numbers, we've had hockey uh, and netball teams, depending on the numbers of students that we've got that want to take part in that. Uh, and we have also supported uh, students individually uh, in individual sports in terms of things like golf and tennis, for example. Uh, Mr. Messenger. Um, yeah, so we just have one come in um, asking about where you can find information about previous results. Um, as it said in the presentation, obviously our previous results um, are positive, which means that they are positive and L3 value added, which means that we add more value to our students um, than other six forms in the local area. Um, but if there is something specific, some subjects you want specific information for, please do email us at six form recruitment and obviously we can come back to you on those ones. Um, I've had another one come in about applying for the EPQ. So the EPQ is done as an additional enrichment activity. So what you'll do is you'll just choose your options as normal and then the EPQ can then be picked up once you've joined us in September. Um, that will be done through an assembly and then it counts towards your enrichment activity that takes place on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how you can do that. So thank you. OK, there's a question about the uh, intake for the sixth form and class sizes. Um, so it, it, it's interesting at the moment to reflect on the fact that our year 12 uh, is about 165 uh, and that's certainly at the that that would be our ideal target for sixth form entry. Uh, our year 13 is at the lower end of what we would uh, be looking for, which is about 140. So you know, the, the overall number that we're looking to recruit for the sixth form uh, is in the realm of uh, you know, somewhere between 160 and 170. That, that would be ideal. Um, now, when we talk about class sizes, it, you know, it, the honest answer is that it varies um, and it varies from subject to subject. Um, so, you know, some of our, um, our overall average class size in year 12 uh, we're looking to get to around about 18 or 19. But what that means is that there are, uh, depending on options, there are some subjects uh, where the class sizes are in the uh, early to mid 20s and there are some subjects uh, that are in the teens and there are uh, a smaller number of subjects uh, that are single figures. I think it's fair to say that um, you know, if, if, if a class is running uh, you know, with, with single figures uh, and, and, and certainly sort of six or se five, six or seven, uh, then we often have a conversation um, about uh, creative delivery of that. So some elements perhaps of shared classes with, uh, with, with year 13 um, and, and different modes of delivery to ensure that we can, that we can deliver that and sustain it. OK, uh, another one we've had come in is, um, can you change your subjects after you've obviously accepted your place? Um, we don't actually firm up your choices until three weeks in. Um, so that's three weeks in September. At that point, what we do is we um, have a discussion with you and ensure that obviously you're still happy with those courses because obviously we want to make sure that you are the right ones from the start. So everything is a bit fluid until the end of those three weeks. You can um, have a look at different examples. As long as you make the entry criteria, um, you can go and try any of the ones out that you can. Obviously, as well, on top of that, we do have our um, induction days in the summer, which will allow you to come into school, hopefully, and experience those subjects. And therefore, obviously, that's going to help you better understand whether that course is right for you to start with. There's a question um, asking about if you're unsure of sixth form uh, options, you know, are you able to apply uh, to more than one school? Um, and, and you very much are. And it is um, what I think I would describe as a buyer's market. Um, and I would encourage you to uh, explore um, you know, all of the options that are available and you can uh, you can make more than one application. Um, I th I th one of the things that I would um, say to all of our applicants, whether that's internal or external, um, when you do apply to us, one of the questions that we will ask you um, is 
to get a sense of where we are in terms of your priorities and you know, whether we're absolutely your first choice or whether in reality um, you know we're, we're perhaps a sort of second choice depending on other things now we simply ask you that not to put you under any pressure uh, but to help us and inform uh, our planning as uh, as clearly as possible and it links in uh, with the question I was answering earlier uh, in terms of when we're making judgments about um, how we structure the timetable um, and, and class sizes, um, then knowing actually, um, you know, whether we're the kind of you know, your first choice or, or perhaps lower down your list of priorities really does help to inform us uh, in our planning. So I ask you to, uh, you know, when we ask you that question, to you know, share that with us as honestly as possible, not to put you under any pressure, uh, but to help us in our planning. Um, uh, another one that's come in is what guidance can we expect for the UCAS application process? Um, so we're actually quite good at the amount of support that we offer. So we start with a focus day, which we get external speakers to come in. Sometimes we take you to universities to experience them and talk about the sort of things that you have to understand. So how to apply to university, the process, the UCAS system. Uh, we also hold parent talks with that alongside that. We then obviously from that point start talking through your personal statement, which is you basically saying yourself to the universities why you want to go and do those particular courses um, and all that support is offered in form time. Um, and then following that, what we do is we obviously have one to one sessions if and when they are needed as well. We do have internal deadlines as well, which we aim for, um, which are different to the external UCAS deadlines that just helps with processing and things like that. Uh, there's a question about pass rates and grades A level uh, for the last three years in specific subjects. Um, it, probably the, the, the best and most accurate way of responding to that is if you email um, the sixth form team uh, and ask for that information, um, then, then we'll happily um, share that. Um, literally just don't have it to hand uh, at the moment. Uh, there's a question about um, studying. Uh, if you study combined science at GCSE, can you still study one or more of the science subjects at A level? Um, and the answer to that is yes, um, there's some quite specific uh, guidance on the grades that are required uh, that's on the subject pages um, of our information on the sixth form uh, in the sixth form uh, prospectus. Uh, we've had one come in saying if they're unsure of the third subject, can they put four levels? We only recommend that you do four levels if you are currently getting seven, eight, and nines across the board. Um, and on results day, if you, for example, you come into us and you haven't got those across the board, we will have those discussions with you to say, actually, are these the right options for you? Um, if you want, want to take four at any point and then you want to drop down to a three, that's fine. OK, that's something which we can do at any point. But like I said, we only recommend you take four from the start if you are getting seven, eight, and nines across the board. There's a question about the uh, whether uh, about the applications process. I don't know whether Mr. Messenger, you just want to sort of talk through how we work through the applications when we receive them. Yeah, so what we do is um, both internal and external applications uh, we'll sit down and meet with you on a one-to-one -one basis with a member of the senior leadership team um, and what we do is we go through and make sure those options are right for you um, and then the only ranking that happens is we try to gauge whether you are 100% um, coming back here or you are um, considering us as a second option just so we can help out with timetable purposes so it's not a case of saying oh sorry you haven't met the interest criteria or anything like that from the moment your application comes in uh, we treat everything like that on results day uh, there's a question about the entry uh, requirements in terms of if GCSE results are mostly sixes and one subjects working at a three, uh, do you still get in? Um, and it's just look, looking very closely at our um, entry criteria. So we're looking for six at grade six or an average of six or above in the best six. And what that does mean is that um, you know there, there will be students every year um, who have got one or perhaps two subjects um, that you know where, where, where the grades aren't a six or above, um, but they get in because um, you know the, the the bulk of the other grades are, and crucially that they've met the individual uh, grade requirements uh, for the subjects that they want to study, which is detailed um, on the subject pages of the sixth form perspectives. Um, we have one comment specifically about um, can you take um, an A level arts in art if you're taking a GCSE. It will purely depends on the quality of your portfolio that comes in and that decision would then lie with our head of art okay because we would need that into criteria met in 90 uh, percent of cases but there are and there are a number of occasions where um students um you know pick up a subject at a level that they haven't perhaps uh done at gcse either because 
two, three years previously, they just didn't make that choice, but um, have now kind of, you know, found their passion and interest in it, uh, or perhaps because the subject wasn't available at the school uh, where they studied. Um, and we would explore those uh, similar to art with the head of subject and the student concerned uh, on a case by case basis. That, that's something in particular for our, um, if when you come in for have the discussions, if you were to come in um, and bring that portfolio with us, that's something we can do. We can take copies of that and then go and show the head of the department to start that conversation as early as possible. Are there any further questions? Because at the moment, um, the the panel that Mr. Messenger and I are looking at in terms of the questions uh, is, is 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 blank. A few more are appearing. Um, Mr. Messenger, do you want to sort of talk yeah, through? Yeah. So, um, do external students have to have an interview for entry? Um, we don't hold interviews. Um, what we do is we hold discussions with you to ensure that obviously, like I said, the options are right for you. So it's not a case of pass fail or anything like that. Um, it's more of a case of you coming, you have a chat with us. Um, just to experience the school, because especially if you're an external student, without you coming into school uh, till now, you are unable to obviously walk around the school. So when you do come into on that day, we'll give you a tour of the school as well to get a real sense about what it is to be an natural. And we are very keen um, as we hopefully emerge from this current period of restrictions um, and, and in anticipation of the government reviewing things in late January, that we are able to um, you know, revert to our normal face-to-face um, -face, uh, elements of the rest of the transition program. Um, I think it's really important, uh, particularly for uh, external applicants, um, that we look to provide an opportunity for you to come into school for to meet us so that we can begin to get to know you, you can begin to get to know us, uh, and you can see, as Mr Messenger uh, mentioned there, the, uh, the, the facilities. Um, so a question about the additional support we provide for Oxbridge applications. So we do have an Oxbridge Society um, that meets once a week, once a fortnight, uh, depending on the timetable, just to catch up with students to talk about their current applications. What we do is we get external speakers to come in, old boys and old girls who have left us, uh, come in to talk about their experiences, their application processes, um, and we get people in from different roadshows to come in and talk to them as well. Students obviously can obviously elect to join these things, but they are also identified when they join the school uh, through our internal processes. Um, and what we do also is we do offer and have done in the past a trip up to Oxford and Cambridge um, to experience that as we go through. I think I think the key there um, is, is is to let us know um, as early as possible um, if that is something that you are interested in finding out more about. And I think it's fair to say um, that actually, uh, even if you don't end up um, applying to Oxbridge, um, that engaging in those activities uh, will help and support you. Um, in terms of you know developing your approach uh, for any applications um, that, that 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 you might be pursuing. Again, again, that's something which would be worth highlighting when you came in to discuss anything with us, because what we can do is we can set you up with the or have a conversation with the dedicated member of staff who runs the Oxford Society, just so you can find a little bit more about the support that we offer. Uh, there's a question about uh, if you get less than a five in English or maths, could you still get in? Um, Theoretically, it, it, it is potentially possible, but actually um, it, it, it would prove problematic in terms of the individual um, entry requirements uh, for uh, uh, across subjects. Um, so that would be an unusual combination of subjects uh, that didn't require a five in English or maths. Um, I, I can think of a possible combination because I know, um, you know that, that we have had a student uh, do that whose combination of subjects didn't require um, that on a subject specific uh, level, but it, but it would be unusual. And, and again, if you refer to the individual subject requirements um, in the prospectus, you, 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 you would see that. Uh, I've had a question, uh, does the EPQ get completed in year 12 or year 13? It can be completed in either. Um, and what we'll do is we'll advertise it to all the sixth form at the start of the year um, and then obviously we'll just start allocating people as happens because what happens with the EPQ you get given a mentor um, so it depends how many mentors we have available at any one time depends on how many obviously applications we can take at any one point um, but if you express an interest we will manage to get it completed um, as soon as we possibly can on that one. I think I think it also varies in terms of students experience of the sixth form for some students um, working on the EPQ um, and, and completing it in year 12 um, is the right thing for them to do at that time. Um, for others, it's something that they, you know, kind of a light on uh, later in year 12 as, it, as, as they go into year 13. Um, no doubt whatsoever, though, 
um, that for those students that do it whenever they do it, um, you know, it is a positive experience and it is certainly one uh, that university admissions tutors, um, you know, look and, you know, and feed back to schools uh, very favourably on in terms of the impact it has uh, for students as they uh, progress to, to higher education. Um, on that as well, uh, you'll have, we'll have several universities that will drop the entry criteria uh, for particular courses if you have got that EBQ. So I strongly advise that you look at it um, when you join us. There's a question about the um, support for specialist admissions test for uh, for Oxbridge, which um, I, I think I'd you know, refer back to Mr. Messenger's previous um, answer about the Oxbridge Society um, and the regular meetings would be part of that, as well as then, um, you know, we would look to link people up with with subject specialists dependent dependent on the subjects that they were prefer preparing for in advance of that. Um, so then we have a question about the six room areas. Yes, what we do is we have three dedicated six room areas. Um, so we have the front study room and we have two others at the back of the school, uh, which students can obviously use to study. They've two of them have got computers in. Uh, one is a little bit more um, relaxed atmosphere, just obviously because the A level is going to be tough. It's more about keeping yourself going, being together part of that community. So again, yeah, we do have these dedicated areas away from the rest of the school. Um, if you, I mean, you are free to use them at any point. Uh, one of them is the uh, the front study room, which Mr. Messenger referred to, is where we are broadcasting uh, live from now. Um, and you will see that above us, uh, one of the words is dapper. You can choose whether uh, that applies to Mr. Messenger or myself. Um, so do we ask references for external students? Um, we don't necessarily ask a reference directly from the school. What we would tend to do is ask you to bring in your monitoring data and most up to date monitoring when you come into our discussion with us, uh, just so we can ensure that obviously you're going to uh, aim to meet that entry criteria that we are looking at. So no formal written references or anything like that. It's just going to be that monitoring that needs to come into when you have that discussion. Uh, there's a question about whether the EPQ has UCAS points and the answer to that is yes, it does. Um, it's kind of the UCAS points are weighted at the equivalent of half an A level or in old money, uh, what used to uh, be an AS. Um, so, and that, so that is the case and, and also along, alongside that, as Mr. Messenger mentioned, a number of uh, university courses uh, will make a reduced offer um, recognising the EPQ. Um, had a question come in about um, if the mass grade isn't a six, you know, for social subject is English relevant, um, can you be accepted? Yes, as long as it's a five, okay. I'm um, referring back to what something Mr. Green said earlier. Um, it will be on a case by case basis and we will have a look to see your courses because some of the courses obviously are more uh, English based than the mass based and therefore we may be able to work something out on that. Okay. Um, there's no further questions um, at the moment. Um, and so that continues to be the case over the next five or 10 seconds. Um, then we will close uh, this evening's session. Doubtless there will be um, more questions that you think of in the days and weeks ahead. Um, and I would encourage you um, to you know, raise those with us. If you're if you're a U11 student um, uh, you know, in school, then come speak to somebody on the sixth form team or any member of the leadership team. Um, and you know, parents and carers and external students uh, do email or phone uh, questions in. Um, and just as I say that, um, another question emerges about A-level choices. If you cannot decide between two A-level subjects for a third A-level, is it better to choose one and change it later or choose four and drop one? I think that's very much the sort of thing um, that we would hope to resolve with you um, in the conversations that we have um, in, the, you know, in the weeks and months as we go towards September. Um, certainly it would be worth you know, one of the things that we'd explore with you, um, and, and it's not uncommon for students to say, well, I know these two A-level subjects that I want to sit, um, but I can't decide between the third and the fourth. And we would want to know what that third and fourth subject are. Um, you know, we'd have a conversation with you in the hope that we could um, resolve that um, you know, and, and have that in place by September. Um, very occasionally, um, you know, a student will perhaps start, uh, as Mr. Messenger referred to, that kind of three week period at the start of September, uh, you know, would perhaps start um, on four courses um, and usually quite quickly um, they, they determine which one is for them uh, and go, go from four back to three. Um, also on that, what we'll do is after your exams are completed, we'll send you out packs of information for you to have a look at the individual subjects as well. So it'll give you a better understanding about what sort of things are going to be in each of the subjects and therefore hopefully you'll be able to grasp that a little bit better by that point as well. And like I said, on the induction day when you come in, we can offer up to five different subjects uh, for you to try. Um, so hopefully that helps you narrow that field down as well.
Um, if you are an external student, how do I apply? Um, you will need to apply through the Kent Choices for You website um, or Kent Choices. And if you need login details for that, you will have to go through your school directly because they should have handed those out because they come directly from KCC. Uh, there's a question asking whether it's possible to choose five A levels. Um, it's certainly possible to choose four um, and for us to timetable that. Um, for a student attempting five, um, the situation would have to be um, that they were doing uh, one of those pretty much independently because the timetable um, you know, would not accommodate uh, that as a taught. Uh, taught in the same way as the other subjects. There's a question also about the uniform policy, uh, which I would refer you, um, I, I would prefer to um, refer to it as our dress code. Uh, and again, that's clearly articulated um, on the on, on the sixth form information page and in the prospectus, uh, but it's very much uh, a kind of, you know, a business-like um, approach, not a uniform as such, but, uh, but certainly a dress code. Um, what in-house sports teams are offered? So what we do is we actually do have um, lots of different sports teams, as Mr Green said, so we do have a football team, um, first and second strong from those. Um, we do also offer hockey and netball, but alongside that we do offer in-house competitions, which sees obviously different um, form groups competing against each other. And what we do is we mix the groups from year 12 and year 13 for those different events. Uh, there's a question about uh, results day if your grades don't meet the requirements uh, for your subjects well obviously very much hope that that isn't the case but obviously every year uh, there will be a small number of students uh, and applicants both internal and external um, where, where, where that is the case um, and we have colleagues um, on site and on hand in order to have those conversations uh, there and then um, in terms of trying to unpick um, you know what, what has happened what it is that you're looking to do um, and then trying to explore um, you know whether those courses are, are are still an option and often that involves uh, a conversation with the subject team um, um, and and also you know what might the alternative options be but it's all very much about having colleagues on hand on site on the day to have those face-to-face -face conversations with you we can't always resolve um, the answer the questions immediately uh, but you know over the course of that day and the following days um, the, you know we we are able to resolve those situations uh, very much on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I've had a question about uh, is there a set date for the induction day um, there isn't one set in stone just yet because what we want to do is obviously um, see what close to the time exactly what the situation is with COVID and things uh, but it's usually around at the end of June, beginning of July. OK, so that sort of week, that's when we tend to hold those. But as soon as we've got anything um, firmed up, we'll obviously contact you um, and let you know. Usually the challenge is to avoid um, it coinciding with Glastonbury weekend. That's <laughs> running this year. Um, are you able to leave throughout the day um, and how does that work? So what we do is we ask, well, we, students are giving full time supervised study um, right from the start. And what that means is, is you're going to be in school for your lessons and all your study periods until Christmas. The reason for that is, is because experience has taught us that actually you need to be shown exactly how much work you're going to have to do because you're going to have 10 hours doing three subjects and at some point you'll go, oh, actually, I've got quite a bit of time on my hands when you need to be outside the lessons studying. And as soon as you can show us that um, and your attendance has been good and you've got your teachers are happy, we can start to obviously release that. So, for example, if you had a lesson period one and two and then nothing the rest of the day, we'll be able to say, OK, yes, you can leave a break time. Okay, but that happens on a case by case basis. Uh, there's a question about um, turnover of staff in the sixth form. Um, I'm, I'm going to hope that I'm not going to um, in, in, in invoke commentators curse here. Um, over recent years, um, staff in uh, both in the sixth form team um, and across the, uh, the, the, the delivery, the teaching side of the sixth form, um, you know, it has, has been really quite stable. Um, and so, you know, as I say, you know, I hope that that very much continues to be the case uh, and I'm not um, subject to commentators curse on that. I had a question about um, how are students placed in different form groups. Um, if you're an internal student, you would tend to just follow into your um, form into the year 13, uh, sorry, year 12 and year 13. Um, and then what happens is for external students, we then try to level you out across the board. So you, we only tend to have, for example, one end external student in a form or two is try to get as many as we can together so you're not don't feel a bit isolated when you join obviously a current form. 
Okay, um, so as I, I, I'm going to see if there are no further questions in the next five or ten seconds. Um, uh, just to reiterate that it, as questions emerge um, in the days and weeks um, ahead, uh, then please do uh, contact us. There's another question uh, which I'll just ask Mr. Messenger to respond to um, in terms of uh, internal students and how to apply. Yeah, so if you're an uh, internal student, you would have had a few emails from me. Um, we are using Sims Options Online website um, to be able to put the applications into place. I've sent you a how to guide directly to your school email. Um, and if you want to, just come and speak to me during the school day. Basically, what you need to do is you need to sign up to the SIM system first and then use the Office 365 system to choose those options. So it is a little bit stages you have to complete. But if you do have any problems, obviously, please let me know. Stop me in the corridor um, or send me an email and I'll be able to talk you through the processes. I am also going to come around form times and book you all into computer rooms to ensure that obviously you are all happy with the system and how it works. The one thing I would say while we're on here is there is a box that says um, parent consent. Um, that will be ticked off at a later date during those discussion meetings that we're going to have with members of the leadership team. OK, um, I do hope that this presentation and question and answer session has been useful. As I say, please do uh, further explore our offer uh, on, on the website. Uh, we are going to be um, uploading some, uh, some, some student presentations uh, as well in relation to the subject. And if you have further questions in the days and weeks ahead, uh, whether they be general uh, in relation to the sixth form uh, or specific to your choices and progression and circumstances, then please do contact the sixth form team uh, in school. Um, there's a, one final question that's just appeared in relation to careers, meetings and advice. Um, and the simple and straightforward answer to that is that yes, we do um, have career support provision uh, and advice sessions. So we very much look forward to welcoming you in person as we progress further along the year 11 into year 12 process as we head into the spring uh, and the summer months uh, and wish you well uh, in all the work that you're doing uh, in preparation for uh, forthcoming uh, PPEs uh, and final exams in the summer. Thank you uh, and good night. Good night.